In this video I'm going to run through a repair of a rear tractor wheel. Uh, as you can see this one had uh, an inner tube in which most do. A lot of times they use solution which is calcium chloride inside of the inner tube and over time if the inner tube gets a hole in it or the valve stem gets a leak it will uh, eat out the valve stem hole in the wheel and the hole inside of the wheel gets all rusty. So basically you can see the hole that's in this wheel that I will do a repair on. Uh, first you got to get back far enough so that you know there's good metal there and cut it out and then uh, replace it with new metal. Uh, before I get into the repair section I need to go on this wheel because there is so much rust on it and I need to remove the scale and rust that's on the inside of the wheel all the way around and that I will do with a uh, needle gun. So uh, before I go any further that will be the first thing that I will do. So I will start with the needle gun right now. That's going to be a little bit on the noisy side and we'll get this wheel all cleaned up. It took me about a half an hour to clean this wheel up just to give you a little bit of history. <clears throat> these old tractor wheels, you can't buy a lot of them anymore. That's why you have to do these repairs. Um, you can't get the wheels in the, in the proper bolt pattern. You can't get them in the sizes that they used to make. So you have to do these repairs to these wheels in order to be able to reuse them. That's the only thing you can do. There is really no other option. So this one now is all cleaned up. You can see that the, the major part, 99% of the scale is gone off of it. The loose stuff that was going to come off is gone. You can see that I have uh, used a black sharpie to mark out and lay out where I'm going to cut uh, the section out of this wheel. And uh, while you're watching, I will cut that out. Uh, basically, you want to go back till you get to uh, good strong metal. You don't want to make a piece up ahead of time or pieces up ahead of time until you know you're back far enough uh, that you have good thick metal that you can weld to otherwise you'll just end up making new pieces if you have to go back and uh, cut further back with your weld now this specific rim looking at this you can see this is a flat surface here running across it pitches back this way and then it pitches up this way so I'm gonna make this in this repair out of two pieces. One is going to be a flat piece that's going to be this width and the other one's going to be a flat piece that's going to be this width. They're going to intersect at this point here and I'm going to fill that up with weld and then on the back side I will grind it out so that it's smooth. So right now I will uh, put my earplugs in, my face shield on and take my grinder with my uh, 45 thousandths thickness cutting wheel and I will uh, cut this section of the wheel out. Looking at that, you can see that I wasn't able to cut all the way through without cutting wider because of uh, the bevel or the dish of the wheel. So I'm going to go on the inside now and I'm going to cut from line to line going across on the inside.
nice section cut out of the wheel. That was the rust hole. You can see what it looked like from both sides. I'm down to new metal on both sides and uh, should be ready to cut pieces to the correct size, prep them up, grind the edges, which I will do next. I will grind these edges up, get this wheel all prepped both sides and start making and cutting up new pieces to go in there. The wheel is all cleaned up on the, out, on the inside section and on the outside section. I cut two pieces of metal out of 14 gauge steel and both of those pieces of metal I needed a piece of uh, inch and three quarters by three and three quarters and I needed one one inch wide by three and three quarters. So these will basically go in here like this and be fit up to lay inside of there. Now right now I got them cut a little bit long. You'll see that because I'm going to have to roll this a little bit to be able to make the radius of this wheel. So whatever you do, don't cut them short because if you cut them short, again, you're going to have to do it again. Do it over. And same thing goes with this one. I got to work it in there a little bit, do a little radiusing and make it fit. So I will get there eventually. Uh, things are going well and we'll move on from there. My machine is a Miller Dynasty 200 DX which is good for aluminum or steel or stainless steel. Uh, basically you can weld anything with it. It doesn't have a lot of amperage up to 200 maximum. Uh, I've got my two pieces all cut up here and cleaned up a quarter inch back. You want to clean all the rust off uh, at least a quarter inch back from where your weld is going to be. I radius them a little bit, didn't take much for that. I got uh, two pieces of 332 filler wire, uh, cleaned the protective coating off, they're ready to go. Um, and I'm using ER70S-2 filler wire. And we are now ready to fit these pieces in and tack them into place. I am also using, down here you can see this is a foot feet which operates my welding machine and uh, the further that I push this down uh, the more amperage I get up to what I've got the machine set at right now which is 100 amps so I would have 100 amps maximum to my rig. Uh, I'm going to purge a little bit of gas out right now. I have probably uh, 70 feet of hose running from my mobile trailer to my welding machine and then back over here to uh, my Heliarc rig which has 8th inch tungsten and basically right now I am ready to start fitting pieces up. So I have a couple of vice grip clamps, uh, I have the smaller 6 inch and then I have some of the 8 inch here also for reaching in if I can't get in far enough. Now what I'm going to do is fit this in here and once I have it all fit up to where I want to, I am going to start tacking it in. But I'm not going to do any tacking or welding until I get this fit up exactly the way that I want it to be fit up. Um, you can do a little bending obviously once you get the pieces in there to where you want them. isn't really clean but it's uh, not too bad. Um, I do a lot of work out of my garage uh, including my own plus fabrication and repair for other people's stuff. fighting this clamp here. It's just not quite long enough. I'm going to switch over to a longer clamp and get it in there a little bit further so that I'm pushing down where I want to get that first tack on the inside. There we go. That's where I want it.
so for right now all I'm trying to do is get some small tacks on it and get it set up into place exactly where I want it. So I've got one small one in there. Now I'll put another one in on the same side and then I can do a little bit of tapping or grinding to be able to fit it in a little further and a little better. So it's never perfect, it's always just something, it's a, it's a work in progress and you just got to keep uh, working at it and you will get it there. So now we'll tack this spot piece in in two spots, one on each side. You got to get the right vantage point and the right situation to be able to get in there and tack. Sorry if I get in your way. Okay, there's one. The welding process on the inside of the wheel has been completed. Um, I have some welding that I'm going to do on the, basically on the outside I will call it of the wheel. I want to get that cleaned up on the outside and then I will grind this smooth and it'll be basically completed. So there it is. The repair has been completed. It's been completely welded inside and out. You can see that I ground it with a grinding wheel and took off most on the inside but not too much. Made it so that it's nice and smooth so that you're not going to catch the tube on it or anything. Um, and then after I did it with a grinding wheel I went over it with a flap disc to uh, clean it up a little bit more. You can see that looks pretty good. And i uh, roll it around to you. See the outside. And there is the outside. Make sure that you can see it because I'll tip this down a little bit. And there is the outside. That's what the outside looks like as it's completed. And I will zoom in a little bit with that so that you can see it. So that's the outside repair. All cleaned up with a flap disc and completed. Um, what I, this is my neighbor's wheel so I'm not going to drill the valve stem in it. He was going to take care of that. Uh, something that I did recommend that he do. Uh, places like Fleet Farms sell non-fibered roof cement which is basically tar. And you can thin that with like kerosene or diesel fuel and if you thin it out and then paint it on in the inside here and leave it for a week or two it will uh, clean that up it'll look just like new inside of there it'll give it a black paint finish but that oil that's in the tar will protect that wheel and stop it from rusting to some extent uh, so it'll extend the, the life of this wheel quite a bit so it is a pretty good mixture it's a good thing to use Back in the 60s and 70s, that's all they used for undercoating on cars was tar and oil. Uh, so it works really well. Uh, that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it helps you out. Thank you. Bye.